In this video, I'm going to be going over five drag and drop questions with you for the 2021 PMP exam. My name is Andrew Ramdial, and I'm the author of the book PMP Exam Prep Simplified. Now, last week I did a video where I did five practice questions with you, and one of them was a drag and drop. I've gotten some good response from it, and a lot of people have asked me more about these drag and drop questions. You see, drag and drop questions are not uncommon in other certification exams, like CompTIA exams, Microsoft, and Cisco but they are uncommon in your PMP exam because it's never been done before. And the 2021 is the first time these drag and drops is brought to the exam. So here we're going to do five of them and it's going to give you, give you a good understanding of what these particular drag and drop questions look like. Let's go ahead and get started and knock them out. Okay, so the first thing up I have is match the process to the process groups. So on the left side, I have a variety of processes, and then I have the process groups on the right side. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag these processes to the process group. So I want you guys to get out a pen and paper, write down the process groups, and then just write the process names next to it. So go ahead and pause the video right about now. Okay, you have unpaused the video. Hopefully you've written your processes next to your process group. Now let me go ahead and do this. Okay, so the first one up I have is monitor risk. Now monitor risk is a monitoring and controlling process. Hopefully you guys remember your processes by process group. Manage quality is an executing process. The next one I have is sequence activity. Sequence activity is done in plan it. Close project or phase is done in close it. Now, manage costs was a trick. It doesn't actually exist. I just created that there just to trick you a little bit. Be careful of made up terms on your exam as they love doing that to you. So that doesn't actually belong in anything here. And then develop project charter is definitely an initiating process. One of the first things you're gonna do in initiate. Okay, so there you go with your first drag and drop. Let's go on to the second one. In the second drag and drop, what I'm gonna be doing here is I'm gonna be dragging uh, on the left side, we have the outputs, and on the right side, we have the process group. So we're going to match the output by the process group. It's the same thing. Go ahead, write the process groups down, and then just write the outputs by them. So let's go ahead and pause the video right now. Okay, so you have finished uh, writing that down, I hope. Let's go ahead and drag them over. So deliverables. Deliverables comes from the process of direct and managed project work. Direct and managed project work is an executing process. The stakeholder register is an output of the process of identify stakeholder, and that comes in initiating. Work performance graph does not exist. That one was actually a trick, so we're not going to use that. That doesn't exist in any, any of PMBOK terms. The final report actually comes from close project or phase, so that comes in closing. Work performance information is an output of many of the monitoring and controlling processes, so that belongs here. And the project scope statement is an output of defined scope. So that belongs in planning. Okay, so there you go with your drag and drop there. Okay, so that was the end of this one. Let's go on to the third one. In the third one, we're looking at same type of concept we're dragging from left to right. Match the project management method to the term. So we have some terms here that are used on projects and exactly what method is gonna be used in these particular uh, terms. So the first thing up, once again, pause the video. Okay, you guys did that. Let's get started. A product backlog is used mostly in agile projects. The work performance report generally comes from predictive projects, something mostly used in PMBOK there. And then a burn up charts and down, burn down charts are mostly used on your agile projects. Okay, that concludes that one. That one was actually pretty short. Let's go on now to st uh, the fourth one. And in this one here, place the retrospective stages in order. So at the end of every sprint in an agile project or iteration, you're going to be doing a retrospective. So retrospectives are basically where the team looks back at the sprint and say what they did right, what they did wrong, and how they're going to make it better. So we have, we have to put this thing in order. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So go ahead and pause the video. There's five stages here. You're going to put them going straight down. You have to put them in the correct order. So go ahead, pause the video right now. Okay, you have finished putting these things in order. Hopefully you guys get this right. I do have a statement that I tell people to get this right. And that statement is set gathered good dog clothes. What that means is if you look at this and you try to put them in order, the easiest way to remember that is by memorizing that statement and you can easily put this in order. Uh, let's put them in order first and then I'll explain what they are. 
Uh, so the first thing you want to do is you want to set that stage. So this is when you bring everyone in and let them know during a retrospective meeting that you know what, we're going to be doing a retrospective. The next thing here is you want to gather data on what happened during that particular sprint. Once you gather the data, you then got to generate insight about that particular data, understand, analyze the data basically. And then the next thing to do, once you know and once you've analyzed the data, is you want to decide on what to do, make some decisions. Maybe you did some things wrong. Maybe you did some things right. So decide what to do in the next sprint and then go ahead and close out your retrospectives. So I made up a statement there. I said, set gathered good dog clothes. If you ever come to this, if you ever have a drag and drop like this, where you got to put them in order. Just remember that statement, set gathered good dog clothes. And it's easy to put this in order, right? So it's S G G D C. So I came up with set gathered dog clothes. You can come up with any one you like. It just well, is whatever works to help you memorize it. I like the one I came up with because it does use some of the words uh, that is there, such as set and gather. Okay, here we go with the actual fifth one. Okay, so same type of concept. Go ahead and drag the terms on the left to the to the actual quality management tool on the right. So match quality, quality management tool with the correct terms. Go ahead and pause the video right now. Okay, hopefully you guys did that right. Let's go ahead and get started. So the rule of seven, the rule of seven is used in a control chart to say if a process is in quote unquote control or not. Trends. Trends are done on scattered diagrams. So this compares two particular points, generally X and Y, such so as the number of defects over time and shows you if it's going, if you get in more or less defect. A Pareto is basically a histogram. The Pareto basically shows you the 80-20 rule and is generally displayed on a histogram. The causes of defect is an Ishikawa diagram. Ishikawa is also known as a cause and effect diagram. So it shows you the reasons of defects. Okay, so these were the different quality management tools with the correct terms. Okay, so these were five drag and drop questions. And don't be surprised if you see something very similar to this on your actual PMP exam. They're not going to be too difficult if you know your terms, you know your processes. Okay, hopefully you guys had some fun with these videos. I will be doing a live PMP questions and answer session with the entire world here on YouTube. So go ahead and join me in those videos. I would greatly appreciate it, by the way, guys, if you can subscribe to my channel, give me a like on the video, and uh, don't forget to hit the notification bell. I hear everybody keep saying. And uh, by the way, leave a comment on how you enjoyed this type of format of me doing this, and I will see you guys in the next video.